Hello and welcome to my channel if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, but if it is not, welcome back. Today I am going to be talking about one of my favorite books ever, and this is actually the second time I have tried to start filming this review video. I tried yesterday and was very rudely interrupted. but I am back today and hopefully there will be no interruptions. But yes, I'm going to be talking about A Song for Arbonne by Guy Gabriel K. I have mentioned A Song for Arbonne several times in several videos on this channel, but my most recent mention was in my five oldies but goldies book recommendations video. And in that video, I wasn't really able to talk about why I love A Song for Arbonne so much, because I just went on for far too long and I had to cut and skim over most of what I had to say about this book. So I am going to take that time today and discuss the themes that I adored within A Song for Arbonne, the characters who I fell in love with, what I feel Kay did impeccably well, and also who I think will really enjoy this book. A very brief overview for A Song for Arbonne is that we are in a fictional historical setting. It is very reminiscent of Troubadour France and Spain and we have a northern mercenary country, Gorho, and a southern more artistically driven country, Arbonne. And stereotypically, Gorho is very masculine. It is ruled by a king, and Arbon in the south is more feminine and is ruled by a court of love. And the troubadours are given more place than the mercenaries and the armies. However, I had a few questions surrounding such a binary concept going into a song for Arbonne. And I will say that Kay acknowledges that very binary division between the countries and points out its flaws and how it really isn't quite such an idealistic matriarchal society in Arbonne. So that is the setting. But to start, I am going to read off of the back here just to set the scene and give a synopsis because Kay and the publishers are able to do that much more concisely than I can. So a song for Arban. It began with love, both courtly and forbidden, and with kingdoms endlessly opposed one dominated by male rulers and their male god, the other in which women and their goddess held a share of earthly power. For the northern mercenary called Blaze, though, it began with the death of a king and a peace treaty that was a betrayal which sent him into a self-imposed exile. His wanderings would bring him to the kingdom of Arban, where the court of love made warriors bow to troubadours, and a well-sung ballad was valued as much as a skillfully swung sword. But Arbonne was a troubled realm, torn by an ancient feud between its most powerful dukes, and coveted as a prize by the land in which Blaise himself had grown to manhood. And no one, except perhaps Arbonne's goddess, could foresee that one northern mercenary might become the key to Arbonne's destiny. Blaise doesn't really want to be involved with these political interweavings and interworkings between Gorho to the north and Arbon to the south. However, he is pulled in via the goddess, via the priestesses in the south, and he sees it through to the end. So I love a reluctant hero. I love a quest story and I also love a rag tag band and we do collect quite a few rag tag members along our journey in A Song for Arbonne. I really enjoyed Blaze's personal journey on this book. I loved following him 
as a character and seeing that growth and I was just rooting for him throughout the entirety of this book. And one thing that is, I think, topmost of my list for why I love A Song for Arbonne and what I think Kay does so beautifully and so perfectly and imperfectly is his depiction of love. And I use perfect and imperfect very pointedly because Kay depicts love in all of its various forms. We have marriages that are of the deepest, truest love between two individuals. There are depictions of marriages of convenience. There is really strong, deep familial ties with a grandmother's love for their grandchild. But then there are other depictions of family that are incredibly brutal and just terrible toxic. There are one night stands, there are missed connections, the love that could have been. Kay manages to pack all of those forms of love in 500 pages and he does so 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 beautifully and one thing that i absolutely love with the way that Kay depicts love throughout a song for our bun is that one form of love is not valued higher than another because Kay highlights the fact that all of these different relationships whether it is the true love of your life your your soulmate your other half or a one night stand those relationships all give something to you, all bring something to your life and form a part of you. Therefore, they are important. It doesn't matter whether that love lasts just one night or whether it lasts six months, six years, until death do you part. It is impacting your life and therefore it is just as important regardless of the timeline. And I think that is something that is not often depicted in books. At least it is not something that I often read about in books. So to see how Kay depicted that within A Song for Arbonne is I think the reason why I fell so deeply in love with this book. I think it was just beautifully, beautifully done. I adored the way all facets of love were depicted. And even if you are not someone who enjoys romance, I would not say that A Song for Arbonne is romance first and foremost. It is very much a fantasy book, a magical realism book, a historical, an alternate historical reality book first and foremost. It just contains many themes of love and many depictions of love as Blaze is on this quest um, to understand the, the prophecy of Arbon. I also think that if you are someone who is very interested in music or are very musically inclined, you might enjoy this book as well because Arbonne is a very musically driven country. So the, the bards and the festivals are a really prevalent theme and part of this plot. So if you are interested in music, if you are interested in that aspect of history, I think you will really enjoy a song for Arbonne. And I will address that the concept of a very masculine northern country obsessed with war and pillaging and slaughter and then a more demure southern country that has a court of love and is more focused on troubadours and bards and festivals and the music. That is a very binary concept and also Arbonne is depicted as idealistically a matriarchal society, I will say. However, there is a part in this book where Kay acknowledges that binary concept and also acknowledges the faults 
within not just Gore Ho, because that's kind of a large part, if not all of this book, but also acknowledges the pitfalls of our bond and why the the way it is depicted, the way it is described is kind of like the positive PR story, but not necessarily the whole picture. Because I do remember like for most, for, for about half of this book or three quarters, I was a little bit hesitant towards these two concepts and just how those coexisted. And then there is a small little few bits of dialogue in which the characters talk about that very issue. And I'm being very vague to try and avoid spoilers. But if you are a little bit hesitant about the very binary concept of this world, if everything else of that I am saying interests you about this book, I would say give it a shot because it is at the very least acknowledged within the plot and within the book. But A Song for Arbonne was five stars for me. I absolutely loved it. It, I think, is one of those books, I said this before and I'll say it again, it's one of those books that I read at just the perfect point in my life, I think, to fall so, so, so deeply in love with this book. And also with Kay, because this was the first K book that I ever read. I picked it up with a friend at a secondhand book sale and I had heard of Guy Gabriel K before in an interview by Brandon Sanderson because Sanderson recommended K as an underrated author who does not get the recognition or as much recognition as he deserves and I totally agree with that. So I saw Guy Gabriel K on the cover. I knew he came very highly recommended and I just thought this cover was quite beautiful, very quintessentially 90s fantasy. So I picked it up, I fell in love and I have fallen in love with most of the books that I've read by K since. So if you love how Sanderson writes both books that are very character driven with fully fleshed out characters, as well as writing really, really immersive worlds, I would say give Kay a try. Kay is not as high epic fantasy as Sanderson. It is much more akin to a chapter in our own history because Kay researches these time periods and places so deeply. He really brings them to life. So it's not quite as high epic fantasy, but there are threads of magic woven throughout all of Kay's books that I have read. And his characters are so multifaceted. They're not black and white. They are very realistic. They are very gray. They are driven by their own wants and needs and desires. And sometimes those things conflict and sometimes they make mistakes. They're not all self-sacrificing. I adore Kay's characters. I love the world that he creates. And he's coming out with a new book in the spring that is, is taking inspiration from medieval France. So if you have heard me speak on and on and on about Kay, but haven't yet picked up a book by him, a Song for Arbonne was the first book by Kay that I read, and it is one that I would recommend to you to pick up first as well. I absolutely loved it, and I hope that you do too if you choose to pick it up. If anything that I have said today has interested you in this book, please let me know down in a comment below because I'd love to chat with you about this book. For now, that is it for me. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will be back soon with a new one. Bye for now.